All right, before we get started today, we have a quick video clip for you to watch. So how's the site coming along so far? Pretty well, as planned. Can you head over to uh, the West Monroe Street tomorrow? Yeah, I can do that. That one, uh, we've got two others that we've got to get done quickly. Right. Um, there's that big two-story house. Oh, hold on, get a text. Hold on. Oh, we got to go. Hold on. What? As you may know, this scenario occurs daily at home construction sites across the United States, except for one big difference, the thieves are getting away with it. Here's an article that initially called our attention to the problem in Joplin, Missouri after the tornado disasters last May. While they were rebuilding the homes, many thieves were going along and stripping the copper wire out. Our research indicates that copper wire is <coughs> stolen from all different types of places, such as muffler shops, catalytic converters, and even underneath the streets. Copper is also being stolen east to west coast. In this article, this poor woman's house was stripped for $32,000 worth of copper before labor costs. And the thieves got away. But the big question is why? As you can see from about 1980 to 2003, the copper prices held relatively steady and then took a dramatic increase. An interesting note is in 2009 when copper prices fall due to the world economy stalling and now are back on the rise and higher than ever. Our research indicates that the typical home contains about 1,200 feet of 12 to 14 gauge copper wire. At a conservative estimate of 45 cents a foot, this translates to a loss of material at $540 before labor costs. We surveyed electrical contractors, did web searches and patent searches to determine if there was any products out there like ours. There are none. The only ones that are out there are using motion detection and protecting substations and light poles. Our possible solutions. Number one is to use motion sensing camera connected to a video recorder with an audible alarm. We threw this idea out though because nosy neighbors and animals may cause false alarms and also your video does no good once the copper is gone. Our second was to use motion sensors triggering lights and alarms, but we also threw this idea out because once again nosy neighbors and animals may trigger false alarms and also alarms may not work in remote locations. Our third was to detect if someone had cut the wire, then trigger a GSM module to call the contractor and sound an audible alarm just in case. We approved this method. Our solution was unique in security systems that no motion detection is used. Instead, we will detect when the wires are cut sensing a short using a microcontroller. In early testing of this solution, we found that you could easily beat the system by clipping one wire at a time, therefore not triggering the alarm and not calling the contractor. So we, looked, we searched for a more foolproof method. Our method was unique in that we considered the wire's capacitance. And capacitance is the ability for a device to store an electrical charge and exist in all electrical circuits. Straight capacitance can be found when any two adjacent conductors are present, as in standard electrical wire. While a straight capacitor is not normally desired, we're going to use this undesirable phenomenon to our advantage to see if the wire has been cut. Straight capacitance varies directly with the wire length. The more wire you have, the more capacitance you have. In the reverse, the less wire you have, the less capacitance. Therefore, when someone cuts the wire, we will be notified. Now I'll hand it over to Dustin Minskin to talk about our solution. Thank you, Nick. We developed a flowchart to illustrate how our system would work. The contractor will arm the alarm and then test the capacitance and use this value and store it as a reference value. So then test the capacitance and compare that value with the original reference value. If it breaks out of our tolerance range, then they will turn on an audible alarm and call the contractor. At the end of the day, the contractor will arm the alarm by pressing a switch 
The microcontroller would then test the capacitor and store this reference value into memory. The microcontroller would then test the capacitance a thousand times per second, comparing this test with the original reference value. If there is a, a significant change in the capacitance, then the microcontroller would then trigger an audible alarm and call the contractor via GSM module. In order for our system to work, we had to determine if the copper wire had capacitance, and if so, how much. We surveyed certified electricians and found that the bulk of wire used in homes is 14 gauge wire. So we purchased two rolls of 50 foot 14 gauge copper wire and tested capacitance. It turned out to be 1,820 picofarad. We then tested two rolls of 50 foot copper wire connected in series to see if the capacitance would change. As we expected, it doubled. During our test, something we didn't expect was a significant change due to temperature. So we tested various lengths of different wires under different temperatures, and here are our results. As you can see, as temperature drops, so does capacitance. As evidence of our graph, we discovered that temperature can cause a significant change in the capacitance, resulting in a false alarm. This caused us to rethink our original test algorithm. Here's our second flowchart. The contractor will again arm the alarm and then test the capacitance and store this value and call it test A. It will then test one millisecond later and call this test B. So through the night, there is no one reference value. It's just continually testing. Once again, if it breaks out of the tolerance range, then it will turn on an audible alarm and call the contractor. In order to program the micro, we had to calculate the theoretical time for the capacitor to charge. This allowed us to determine the appropriate circuit resistance. To test and model the software, we, has, we used an SDK 500 developers board. This allowed us to interface the micro's input and output ports. Connecting the micro to a computer with its SDK 500 serial ports allowed us to determine if our charge calculations were correct. We used an oscilloscope to measure the time required for the capacitor to charge. By using the oscilloscope cursors, we were able to accurately measure the charge rate. The charge rate, as illustrated by the delta time, 50 foot of copper wire, is 220 microseconds. This waveform illustrates the charge rate for 100 foot of copper wire, and as you can tell, the delta time is double. The results showed our, our calculation to be fairly accurate. Here is testing for 50 foot of copper wire. These are the test results for 100 foot of copper wire. As you can tell, the values have doubled. I'm going to hand it over to Shane Brown to talk about development. All right. Thank you, Dustin. We use a revised flow chart to write the next program. We also use simulation software to model our system and test our results. We then use an STK500 to program our IC. We use per peripheral components to work connected to test the prototype for several days, creating a log of our data. Here is an example of our log of our data taken every 15 minutes over six, minute, or over six days of operation. As you can see, there were no false alarms. Our first prototype was created on a, on a breadboard to further test our device. Our second prototype was soldered on a proto board as illustrated. We measured the current flow in, or, in order to calculate power consumption, amp hours, and power requirements. With capacitance testing complete, we had to address the issue of turning on the alarm whenever there was a drastic change in the wire's capacitance. To turn on the alarm, we programmed the micro to produce a logic high on port PC2 of the microchips. This high would turn on the transistor switch we used a MOSFET that could handle the highest current requirements of even the loudest alarm. Our design includes the option of adding a GSM module that will not only call the contractor, but can text the contractor in the event that someone is stealing wire. So when the electrical wire is cut, not only will the alarm sound, but the GSM module will send a text message to the contractor. Our installation of our product is basic. You connect one lead to the main breaker, and then one lead to the ground bus, and then our instruction manual is under development. We needed our design to be easily mountable, durable, weatherproof, and as compact as possible. We found a standard NEMA junction box that fits all of those requirements. Our system needs to have a battery life of about a year. We selected a low power microchip to pr reduce power consumption. There should be no false alarms. By the very design of our system, we can ensure that the only way to trigger the alarm is to someone if someone removes wire from the circuitry. 
we created a Windows application to where the user can plug in the phone number, the text message, plug it up to a USB port on your computer, press program, and it's programmed. I will now hand it over to Nick to answer any questions. All right, this concludes our presentation today. I'd like to take this time to answer any questions you may have and demonstrate our prototype.